Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, a Wednesday edition of uh, the AccessAtrader.com a uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, welcome aboard. Thank you very much for spending a couple of minutes with us. Talk about market, talk about the individual uh, sentiment plays and all that good jargon that comes uh, with it. Uh, as we talked about last night, if you guys uh, watched last night's video, uh, the, the special fall uh, sale for all you guys who are asking and wanted to uh, kick the tires uh, in the webinar to see how these pivots play out live right in front of you. Uh, as you can really imagine, you need to see them play out in front of you. Uh, we started last night. We got a good response yesterday. It's going on for one day, uh, one more day, guys. So if you are interested, uh, it's like 47 bucks for the next 30 days. See if pivots are right for you. I always encourage uh, traders to kind of try everything out. Not everything is right for everybody. Uh, just like Baskin Robbins, there's 31 flavors. If you haven't tried out pivots or or on the fence, check it out 30 days, see exactly uh, if it's the right fit for you. The link should be uh, below in the comments section. So let's talk about the market. Uh, yesterday, uh, we had a lot of technical damage, right? Uh, we talked about this last night. A lot of stocks got uh, absolutely hit. Uh, Microsoft got hit yesterday. Apple uh, that we had, I carried about 25%. Oh, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. We covered about 10%. Uh, overnight, we covered some more uh, yesterday into the close. Um, everything got hit yesterday. The question was, you know, is the market, was the market able to uh, sustain the debt cap bounce today? And for the first hour, hour and a half of the day, the market did absolutely nothing. It was just sitting there. Uh, the, the NASDAQ was up a little bit. The Dow was down a little bit. And it was like, oh, you know, this is a prototypical uh, inside day, which basically means the market doesn't take out the previous day's high. The market doesn't take out the previous day's low. It's just resting. Again, when you, when you have an inside day after a big move down, it's not resting to go higher. It's resting to go lower. And then just the way we talk about every single day, we, we don't trade because the market is open. We trade because we have value. And we were sitting there, sitting there. And then all of a sudden, things started to get pulled. And anybody, and if you've been watching this video, this broadcast for a long time, I always say anybody who buys the market the day after a major sell-off or a major um, damage that occurs the previous days and they buy it the next morning on a gap up, nine out of 10 times, you're buying it back into rising 60 minutes supply. And you know we talked about it today in the webinar. We've been talking about this for years. Anybody who buys the open on a gap up after technical damage has occurred, you're probably going to lose money at the open. And if you look at the queues, that's exactly what happened. You know, the queues gapped up, right? If you look at the queues, this is a 60 minute view here. Uh, the queues gapped up, right? They gapped up here. Uh, they gapped up. And then next thing you know, just a violent, violent sell off. We'll talk about the, the spike here in a second. And it really did lead to a lot of names confirming the previous day's channels. Uh, Oracle. Uh, Oracle got hit. You guys remember yesterday, it was a great pivot yesterday at 107 on Oracle. Uh, got hit again today. Apple got manhandled. Uh, got manhandled today again. Once it broke that 73.50 yesterday, that was a big macro pivot. Uh, stock went all the way down to 69.10. And there's a lot of names. I mean, really a lot of names after the market got pulled. Uh, Amazon and Google. I mean, everything got really, really aggressive. But the most important part is what the bulls didn't accomplish today. And that was a big deal. We talked about this uh, last night in the video. After the initial, after the initial sell-off, and again, it was violent. Uh, this time around, it was violent. Uh, even Tesla got hit. We'll talk about Tesla there in a second. It was a really, really good move in Tesla. But the one thing the market continues to do that we talked about in last night's video, right? It keeps on getting rejected. Even the moves to the upside or potential rallies or snapbacks or dead cat bounces, whatever you want to call it, even those moves continue to get rejected in the orange line. Again, that orange line is the five day. Again, you can see it. High, right? High, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. And they continue to do so. So, it's very, very important for the bulls at some point here, okay? At some point, I'm not even talking about reclaiming back uh, the 100-day moving average. At some point, they have to reclaim back the five-day moving average 
to kind of, you know, just kind of stabilize things. Because if that doesn't happen, the longer it starts to build, we're going to start drifting back into this 348 level. That's the next area of demand. And we talk about this all the time. It's the whole premise of the PS60 theory. Once stocks lose demand, right? Here's demand here that they lost. They go to the next demand. Once they lose this demand, well, they go go to the next demand. So the longer we continue to build and the longer we continue to put lower highs on the five-day moving average, the higher probability we're going to start getting back uh, into that 348 level. Like And like I said yesterday on the video, it doesn't have to happen tomorrow. Again, the market doesn't need to go down every single day. And you definitely want to avoid the days that are, are having uh, kind of a reverse trend days. But boy, oh boy, the longer it builds, the higher probability the magnet will get pulled uh, and the Qs will start seeing back the 348. So it's very, very important uh, twofolds for the, for the bulls to do two things. Uh, number one, reclaim back 357, 358 on the close. What that's going to do is reclaim the five-day moving average. And then you start looking at a little bit of a longer time frame. Then you have to start reclaiming back the 62 level that we got rejected back to back days before we swan dive below the 100 day moving average. So the bulls need, you know, they have a lot of work cut off of them. And considering how crappy uh, technology has been acting, it's going to be a very, very tall chore uh, to kind of accomplish. But again, nothing is impossible, nothing is improbable. But the price action is the judge, jury, uh, and the executioner when it comes to uh, your final opinion, your final process, uh, opinion, and final. Uh, ways to look at the market. So it's going to be very, very important for tomorrow. We'll get to the pivots in a second. As you can imagine, there was a lot of pivots for the majority of the day just because stocks were just sitting, sitting uh, in, a, in a kind of a, a, a kind of an inside day fashion. And something happened in the middle of the day. If you guys look at the five minute, you know, at the five minute chart, this is a five minute view. So the whole day, they just, you know, off the open, right? This is off the open. Everything got faded. Everything got pulled. And if you guys remember, we've been getting We've been getting um, kind of rumors, is there going to be a government shutdown? Is there not going to be a government shutdown? And some point today uh, in the afternoon, you saw some rumors, right? That's all they were. There were rumors uh, that came out and the NASDAQ, I mean, just jolted. I mean, it went from 351 all the way up to like 356. So this is within, within an hour. Uh, unfortunately, right? Unfortunately, well, this is so far uh, still a rumor and there's nothing concrete about uh, any decision to, uh, you know, have the government to reopen can continue to to, to remain open, uh, or for the, the shutdown to actually go into uh, an effective date. And you can see here towards the latter uh, part, right towards the latter part of uh, into the close, right, it went up aggressively and it came back uh, half the bar, and they're up a little bit here uh, after hours. This is obviously a fake print, or else the world just ended here. Um, but more important, going into tomorrow because of this rally. This is a fake print, guys. I, pro I, I promise you, this is a fake print on. Uh, see, this is a fake print on eSignal. Uh, but but I will tell you this much, right? What t what today did accomplish, or at least didn't accomplish, uh, from the point of reference, is the fact that we did have that rally uh, into the end of the day, or at least close to the end of the day. What happened was all the short setups that we were watching for tomorrow. Everything now is in the, in the middle of its ranges, which is not good, uh, which is absolutely not good. So tomorrow is going to be a day that we definitely want to sit back, relax, breathe, and let the price action play out, okay? Because again, to borrow a term from uh, the poker world, tomorrow we are being dealt a 2-7 offsuit, right? Like for example, Tesla is, re is, is literally $10 away from an upside pivot. And it's probably down, you know, it's probably about five dollars away from it from a downside pivot, right? And that's the whole point. Everything's in the middle of their of their action. Tomorrow might be a situation that if we get lucky, and again, we never know what we set alerts for in the past that could wake up and you know do something good. But I would be shocked, right? I would be really, really shocked uh, if we got some really big measure potential move uh, that could potentially give us some, you know, a really magnificent move. Again, anything could happen. Anything's possible. But I'll be shocked just because the way we closed uh, in the middle of their channel. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about today's pivots. Um, so Apple broke down, right? Apple broke down yesterday, uh, seventy three fifty key level. If it builds below, it can flush. Uh, here was today's pivot, seventy one sixty six needs to confirm yesterday's channels to break down more. Apple got hit really really hard. So here here was yesterday's pivot, the seventy three fifty. Here's today's pivot below the seventy one sixty six. 
went all the way down to 69. Just a phenomenal move. Really, really phenomenal move. Uh, NET never got the never got the 56 yesterday. Uh, Oracle broke down above 107.30. Uh, below, excuse me, 107.30 today. 104.30 needs to build. Went down another dollar. Uh, PLTR never got there. Uh, Goodyear tires, right? Goodyear tires, folks. Uh, we've been talking about this. Feels like forever, uh, but it's been about two three weeks. It finally closed below the earnings lows. Keep an eye on this thing. And again, it's not going to be one of those things you have to panic rush into. But this is the first close below the earnings lows. And, you know, sometimes earnings low plays take two, three, four weeks sometimes to play out. Again, they're not beta stocks. It's not, not going to be like Tesla running all over the place. So it's going to need some time. But if, if this thing starts confirming today's channels tomorrow, uh, Goodyear Tire can continue uh, to go lower. Uh, so same thing as uh, Krispy Kreme Donuts, right? Exactly the same play here. Uh, Krispy Kreme Donuts, this is the cl lowest close in this whole formation, uh, confirming the earnings low. Same thing, same notes uh, as Goodyear uh, as Goodyear Tire, right? Same thing as Goodyear Tire. Um, one thing that didn't uh, wasn't great, wasn't great today. So uh, if you guys know, I've been holding this earnings low runner. I only had 10% left of Peloton, uh, it, you know, I shorted it at 503. Um, it went all the way down to 430. I kept the 10% runner just to see if, you know, it would get below $4. Unfortunately, uh, they just came out with a PR af after the close. Uh, I think a, a multi-year agreement with uh, Lululemon, it, it went up a lot. I was just picking up my son from, um, from the bus stop from school. By the time I got home, it went back down to the 20s. So I covered my last 10% down 20 cents. Eh, this, at, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. But listen, again, it is what it is. Sometimes when you're holding a position for you know multiple weeks, uh, the one thing you can defend is against that PR. And uh, Peloton, I closed out the position. But overall, it's very, very tough to complain uh, about the move that it gave us from that 503 all the way down to the 430s level. So that was uh, pretty good uh, as well. Uh, tomorrow, we got more data coming out. It feels like we have data nonstop coming out uh, for the next uh, X amount of days. But the most important part about tomorrow's session is kind of what we talk about every single day is, you know, you know, look at your charts, right? I, I went through a lot of charts today, tonight after the close, and I tell you, everything's in the middle of the range. I'm not running out tomorrow gung-ho uh, to start buying anything or start shorting anything in sight. Well, tomorrow's one of those days that we say it all the time. You have to let the market do the heavy lifting for us tomorrow, okay? If there is a dead cat bounce tomorrow, let the stocks get to the top of the range. If there's, you know, obviously if we fail, we'll start watching for the bottom range tomorrow. But the point is tomorrow's starting, tomorrow's starting up as a very low level type of day. Again, anything's possible. We'll always watch the, the option flow market to see if there's heavy betting one way or another. Uh, but more important, uh, more important is one of those situations that we have to be uh, very, very patient. Oh, I totally forgot about, uh, I totally forgot about the trade, uh, the move of the day, right? We talked about the move of the day here. Tesla, right? Tesla, totally, totally forgot about Tesla. I knew I forgot about something. Tesla, 240 initial entry. The big area will be the Monday's 238 low needs to confirm. Size buyers came in for the 10.6, 230 puts. Tesla was definitely the move of the day. Congratulations for everybody caught it. So it broke the 240, right? It broke the 240. It broke Monday's low of 238 and went all the way down to 234, which is his next rising demand zone. So great job today, guys. Really good action. Really, really good action uh, all around. Again, tomorrow, we got to be a little bit more prudent. We got to be a little bit more uh, feasible in our approach. But more important is we have to be adults, right? Again, it's not the market we want. Sometimes it's the market we have. And sometimes the market is just there to facilitate buy and sell orders just like it does uh, every single day. And it doesn't care what we think or we want to have uh, done. Guys, have a brilliant, brilliant evening. Have a wonderful rest. Uh, God's help. I'll see you all tomorrow. Just uh, a reminder, uh, there is no video tomorrow. It's Thursday is my normal night off. But again, if you are planning to join, guys, again, take advantage. You have one day left. Uh, take advantage of uh, the $47, uh, $47 trial to see if pivots are right for you. Again, it's it's super, super important uh, to figure out where you fit in this market. If you're an options trader, equities trader, Forex, Bitcoin, E-minis, whatever the case may be. But try everything before you make a determination of where you want to see your career go. Guys, God bless everybody. I will see you all soon. Take care.